I don't know what he looked like. You looped in there. It was so cute. Yeah, but like I forgot. And just like that, she has her glasses. Aren't they so cute? Mm -hmm. I love them so much. That is going to be it for uh, this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, right? Bye. Bye. Hi there and welcome to my channel. I'm Jennifer. This is A Country Life. And in this video, I am going to be sharing with you guys a, a full week of meals. So I sat down with my son Peter and we made a meal plan together. Um, this was already Hi getting there. made. <laughs> this was already getting made. Uh, so this was not part of the meal plan that he helped me with. But anyway, we are having salsa. Do we call it salsa? Chicken salsa verde? Or Sam, is it called verde salsa or salsa verde? So anyway, today what we're doing, I pulled up one of my freezer meals. It was chicken salsa verde. Joe, do you want to serve that over rice? No rice. No rice. Okay, so we put it, I put it in the crock pot on low. No. It was completely thawed no. for just about maybe three to four hours. We have a little bit of leftover macaroni and cheese, some homemade stuff that Maria had made, but we're gonna be serving this over rice tonight with a little sour cream and a little shredded cheese. Good morning, and I'm getting bread going this morning. We're gonna be having some leftover soup for lunch and thought it would be nice to have some homemade bread to go with that. We've really been into my honey whole wheat recipe lately. Um, the kids did ask if I would do it with just white, at least Peter asked if I would do it with just white flour this time. So I said, sure, we can do that. What? All right, I have all of this really delicious uh, local honey uh, and I have been trying so, so hard to get, use this up. So there, I finally used the last tablespoon of this honey up pull one of my napkins out. I've mentioned this before, but when we, after we eat supper, I always look at everybody's napkins. I have not done my shower here yet, but I look at everybody's napkin and if it looks like it's pretty good, I keep them actually. And then I use them for things like this, like when I get honey on my hands or milk or I'm, I'm baking, I'm cooking, I need to just uh, wipe my hands quick or maybe something, something spills, I can just use like a already partially used napkin or paper towel. It's just a way to save. I'm trying so, so hard to get, use this up. So there, I finally used the last tablespoon of this honey up. Let's move you guys off of the honey. Where should I put you? On a coffee cup, maybe? Do you guys wanna be rested on a coffee cup? And we're gonna get some of this honey. I need about a tablespoon. Oh, that is beautiful. We are back into full force of school. So we started back in mid-August uh, just doing math and literature. But we are back into the full force now here. I took my trip to uh, Florida. We went to see Luke Bryan. Uh, we went to the Trappers Convention. We spent the night between those two things. We went to visit Amber. We have just been doing everything, it feels like lately, but we are back home, just back into the routine, and it feels so good. I really want to get some whole wheat flour into here, so what I'm going to do uh, this time is do, I did three cups of white, and we'll do one cup of whole wheat. I know I have viewers here who are younger moms with younger children that are homeschooling and uh, I, I get the question often to me about, you know, how, how are you able to manage the homeschooling and the homemaking and just kind of all of the things that are required. And I say, well, number one, we're not, that, that is just the right word, right? Just managing. We're never completely getting it all figured out, just kind of managing. And right now for me, I, I don't have babies and toddlers, so I can do something like this, like get the bread going here in the morning, uh, go take my shower, and my kids are getting started with their schoolwork. I write out their list so they know what they have to do, and they can get started on their individual work, and then, you know, they'll earmark something if, if, they're, if they're unsure, and then they can just ask me, but I, I can go and do that and, you know, take my shower and get the laundry going and get the bread in and things like that uh, without them being, you know, right at my feet. But 
there was a time when there was babies and toddlers and I guess uh, my best uh, tip for you is I put my kids in a backpack a lot but I had just like a good hard um, framed backpack and I use that a lot to be able to get things done to keep that baby close and then also just kind of setting your expectations just a bit lower uh, you don't want to completely expect nothing from yourself but you do want to set your expectations just a little bit lower and then really prioritize the most important things and just kind of say you know what maybe these three things are the most important and there's going to be other things I'm just going to have to skip or say no to or bow out of. We are going to start working on spelling. Uh, I am not currently using a particular curriculum for spelling. I just go through, uh, right now I'm just using Peter's Science and I look through there and we work on, oh, probably 10 or so words a day. And like, for example, if one of the words is, oh, I don't even know, like let's say, like he had a thing in his science about cardinals. So we use cardinal as one of the words. Um, and then I might come up with another word that ends with an N-A-L. And so like we might do final and we might do some other words like that. I just kind of think of some other words that would follow kind of that sort of spelling rule or utilize that so that they can kind of start to see the patterns in lots of words. So that's what we're doing for spelling. And then at the end of that, then I just keep track of all the words that we've done. I have them spell them one last time, and if they happen to get them all right, they get a quarter. So that's that's what we're doing. So a little bit of a incentive. A dollar. A dollar? No, you you've got to be kidding me. Twenty five cents. That's what I do. Quarters all the way around today. Nice job. Okay, kids are working on their first test for math. We're doing Saxon math. 7-6 this year. I have them both working together, which is actually working out just fine. Oh, and Joe's got the music blaring. And uh, I'm going to give Joe a little bit more time before I start in with his schoolwork. And I'm just going to work on sweeping. So our schoolroom, like what we call our porch, which is where it's just kind of an entryway area. <laughs> that needs to be swept. And then I'm also going to sort laundry. Joel already collected laundry for me. So definitely have your kids help you out. There are things that they can do. Everybody can do something at their level. Uh, train them how to do that thing and then let them excel at it. I legit thought I wasn't gonna be doing any laundry today other than like putting all of this stuff away that was hanging to dry but Joe collected laundry and I have an entire load of darks yesterday I think I did four and then I think Peter did a couple of loads last night he washed his shoes and he also washed him his and Joe's pillow we ran the washer like all day and again <laughs> there's more laundry. And that is just with really five of us. I mean, I don't really do Sam's laundry. I guess he throws towels and stuff like that in, but otherwise he does his own laundry. Um, and that is only five of us. If you are in a time period where you have babies and toddlers, they're going through a whole lot of clothes, uh, you know, soiling things a lot. If you have more people in your household right now, my best tip for you would be to, to get all the dirty laundry into one location every single day and then to um, and then to just do a load every day. Just every single day. Uh, that doesn't always happen perfectly. You know, I mean, it doesn't always happen perfectly. But if you can get a load going every single day, even if it happens to be kind of a small one, there's there's just something about that. Set your machine to medium. Don't worry about, you're not going to waste water if you uh, set it to medium or something like that into a smaller load. Yes, Peter. So, I'm being so like called for help. One, it's like 32 plus 32. All right, you guys are back on the coffee maker, or sorry, not coffee maker, but the coffee cup. And I have my pan sprayed. I'm going to get a little bit of olive oil on my counter because the bread is all done. And I want to make sure that this is done for lunch. It actually was done about 20 minutes ago, but I just didn't get to it.
This feels really nice with the one cup of whole wheat. It still smells, still has that nice like kind of nutty wheat smell. This is going to be good. Mm -hmm. What, Peter? Well, what could it mean? Nope. Yes. All right, I'm just going to spread the dough out here. My hands have some oil on, so I can't grab my camera and change it to a different position. But so I'm just going to roll pretty tightly. I like to roll the bread fairly tight. And then I'm going to pinch, 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 pinch. If you want to start making your own homemade bread, I'm talking just like yeast bread, um, I would recommend a bread machine to make the dough. I love being able to just kind of walk away. I love being able to get all of the ingredients into the bread machine, walk away. It does the mixing. I know it's going to mix it just right. I've had, I've done it a number of times using my KitchenAid. And I don't know, I just can't seem to get it down the way the bread machine does it. it there's something about the way the bread machine needs and then it kind of rests and then it needs and then it rests and it has just the right ab amount of warmth in there to get the bread um, for its like first rise. I just really, really like that. So anyway, uh, that's how I use my bread machine. And this bread machine is so old. Yeah, this, is, this is this uh, is Oster or Oster. It's so old. The lid is broken. Hi, Joe. You rubbing my back for me? Yep. Thanks. <laughs> uh, it's just really, really old. And like I said, the lid is broken, but it still does what it needs to do. So... You can probably pick these up at like rummage sales, um, thrift stores, things like that. Whoop, watch out, honey. I got oil on that counter there. Honey, there's oil there. I don't want you to get your shirt on it. Huh? Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to get this bread covered. Just going to set it on the stove. It's a nice warm day. It is almost 70 right now, and it's 10.20 in the morning. It's supposed to get up in the mid-80s today, Hi so it's going to be a really nice day. Anyway, it's nice. Uh, it's a good temperature in the house, and the bread should rise. I would think it should rise definitely within the hour, maybe even a little under an hour, and then that gives me just enough time to get the oven preheated to 350, and I will bake this for 30 to 35 minutes, um, typically 30 is good, but if you want a little darker crust, then 35 works. With the literature unit, we usually spend about 30 minutes. Then I went outside, checked for eggs. We, we think we have something getting into the chicken coop, possibly a, a possum or a barn rat, which would really, which, because there, nothing is bothering the chickens, but all the eggs are gone. So um, anyway, Peter's gonna go and set some more traps. He set some the other day, but then the chickens got out. We didn't want the traps set with the chickens out. Anyway, we need to get to the bottom of that. And then I just transferred over laundry over there, hung up a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna use the time. Oh, and when I was outside, I, I always just say it, I played with my flowers, which means I just snipped back any of the spent blossoms and I watered some of them that were dry. And I got Joe going on his reading, so we are going to actually sit down. He's gonna read it again to me. I was doing laundry while he was reading it the first time, but he'll read it again to me and we'll go over that. And then we'll do some spelling words uh, based on the sentences and words in this book. We are using the Mrs. Brown so happy to learn um, curriculum. I used it last year, maybe even part of the year before, and it's it works really well. You can tailor it up and tailor it down uh, depending on the level of your child. And he really seems to like it, and he's definitely um, he's definitely moving into the advanced. Although he loves to do the more simple work because it's probably just more fun and easy, right? <laughs> you think I'm taking a picture of you? Yep. Hi. Uh, so smile you. Oh, I'll smile too. We'll both smile. <laughs> Everybody is in for lunch. Um, I wish I would have had about another half an hour uh, to let the bread rise. 
because it's not quite as fluffy, I guess, as I would like it to be, but it's still going to get eaten up nonetheless. And yes, probably 30 seconds on that. We have a little bit of uh, the lid just like just cracked, just kind of cracked. Um, yeah, so we have a little bit of leftover, some soup, some rice, a little bit of macaroni and cheese, and some homemade bread. Yep, Peter's going to slice that. You're going to save this one for Dad? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Oh, That's for that Dad. Good. And then I also warmed up the chicken noodle soup. So we're going to have that for lunch. Well, lunch is all finished. That bread was really, really good. I actually didn't have a piece today. Um, I am still have been continuing with low-carb eating. For the most part. I've kind of found a really good happy medium place where I can have a few carbs here and there. Um, but I am still feeling good in the joints and still losing just a little bit of weight here and there. So that has been a good thing. Uh, it's time to fold up the laundry. I just put away all the laundry that was like dried. All the things I hang that I that was dry from yesterday, put all that away. And we're just going to fold up this one load. That'll be it for laundry today. Maria is going through Hunter Safety, so she does have some afternoon school work to do because she has to work on her Hunter Safety, and they do that online. So she has to log in. This is really angled funny, isn't it? Um, yeah, so she has to log on line and then um, there's like little videos that she watches, then they have quizzes they have to answer and get so many questions right before they can move on. So she's working on that. And then I do, they are trying to talk me into going to the library, which would be a good thing. We have to stop at the P.O. box. I know that I have, is this a medium? Yes, that goes on Peter's pile. I know that I have, um, some outstanding orders right now so i'm just kind of waiting for people to make their payments so i can get those things sent to them so it would be good to go to the p.o box and see if those are there i also have a couple more cookbooks i need to ship today so i think i probably could get those packaged up if you're new here because of september uh, welcome there was a number of new subscribers here and just new viewers in general from that collaboration. And a number of you also purchased my cookbook. I apologize that I was so excited to get that video posted and I was getting all the other links for the playlist and all that kind of thing in the video description that I completely forgot to type out the recipes and we were on our way to go visit uh, one of our, our older daughter. Amber and so I completely forgot and so I didn't get them typed out in the description box of that video till the next morning That was not my intent um, But if you did purchase a cookbook or two, thank you so much. You can still purchase those cookbooks uh, Use the code this month. I think I have it set to go until October 3rd September S-O-U-P-T-E-M-B-E-R September and that will get you 20% off of um, cookbooks on my website. If you are looking for those soup recipes, they are there now. They are typed out completely. Both soups plus the bread. I had um, a couple more cookbooks to send out. So Karen in New York and Heidi in Tennessee. I am getting your cookbooks shipped out today. It is you'll probably have them before I get this video edited. It always takes me probably Oh, anywhere from four to 12 days before I get a video edited. I just called the boys in because we're gonna go to the library. Joe, you went and got an apple. How is that? Good. That's a Wolf River and you have a bone. Yep, and a bone. Oh, and a bone. Okay, well. <laughs> delicious. It's delicious. I'm glad to hear that. So Maria is just oh taking apart a puzzle that she had gotten at the library last time. I am going to gather up my stuff here. This afternoon, I did spend some time while Maria was, like I said, she had to do her hunter safety. So I was just kind of by her in case 
she didn't need my help at all, but just in case. And I also was doing computer stuff. So I was printing labels. Uh, I had a couple of contracts to sign I um, for like brand uh, partnerships that I'm working on. And then what else did I do? What else did I do? Oh, I went down a rabbit hole of recipes. <laughs> And like, like I need more recipes, really. But um, you know, you just never know. You might find something that's just, just looks better than anything you already have. So anyway, I went down that long rabbit hole of recipes, and then I was also working a little bit on some video stuff. So yeah, I don't always like put that. Well, sometimes I put it into my videos. But anyway, that was something I did. I was like transferring video from my camera to my computer and then I was getting it lined up uh, in my um, in my editing software. That doesn't take very long to do. But anyway, I did I did do that as well. So now we're just getting ready to go to the library. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Okay, good. So we're just waiting on Peter. He is working at setting those traps for whatever it is that's getting into, why do I keep walking over here? I need to get my purse. Um, whatever's getting into the chickens. He's like, I just need five more minutes, Mom. So, and actually the whole sentence was, I just need five more minutes so I can get everything uh, picked up and put away. And when your 12-year-old says, I'm going to pick up and put away, you give them some time to do that. So that's, that's kind of our afternoon. Warren and I have date night planned for tonight, so I'm really looking forward to that. We're going to go see the movie Reagan, and then um, maybe maybe hit up, uh, there's like kind of a, um, a brewery, a brewery. Yeah. Yeah. Like a, like a little microbrewery up there. Um, and they also have some good appetizers. So I think we're going to hit up that place afterwards and then head back home. So the kids will be on their own to make chicken patties. Yep. And isn't she so cute? I love her glasses. Oh, I'm covering him up. I just <laughs> love her glasses so much. They are so cute. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love them. Everybody loves them too. Mm -hmm. Dad, Sam, all of Sam's friends. He was <laughs> snapping pictures of her right away to send to his friends. They're all like, ooh, she looks so smart and studious. And it's just so, they're so great. So anyway, here we go. <gasps> we got eggs. Yep. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. I say it's awesome because what's been happening is, like I said, something's getting into our, um, what's in your eye, honey? Well, I know, it does do it. Something's in your eye, huh? Anyway, something's it been getting in by it. the chickens and stealing the eggs. plan here was to pick up the camera this morning, but we were just doing schoolwork and yeah, I was doing some business stuff inter intermingled with that. Not really much for housework at all. Oh, I guess I did do a bunch of sweeping. Of course, I feel like I'm always sweeping. All right, but it's lunchtime now. We have a pile of leftovers, but I also just wanted to make some egg in a hole. Some people call these toad in a hole. What were some of the other ones? Um, Hen Hendo's, I think. Hendo's was another one. Anyway, lots of names. Last time I made these, you guys shared all the different things that your um, family calls them. So, made some of those. I'm warming up the last little bit. Oh, that's not hot, Joe. The last little bits of soup. So, Joe is having some chicken noodle. I already have that out for him. He's also going to have a piece of toast. I have a little leftover rice from the other night when I made the salsa verde chicken. That all went. Uh, just that meal, but we did have a little leftover rice, so I think Maria is going to have that rice. She'll probably probably put some cheese on it. I have some cranberry sauce over there and some pickles, and I have some other sliced cheese. You can have an egg in the hole, yes. And I have some venison sticks, so all kinds of things. And yes, I don't know if you can see this, if it's showing up here on camera, but I have a bunch of stains all over the shirt. I don't really know where that came from, like here and here and here. Anyway but I'm at home, it doesn't matter. So that's it, that's gonna be lunch here today. Really simple, and I think I will get back into filming some more Day in the Life. So, so far, what have we done this morning, Maria? School. School, so yeah, you did, school. like what were you working on? Handwriting, um, uh, what's it called? I don't know what's it called. <laughs> My science. Science? 
Okay, science. Um, You're doing like life science, right? Yeah, life earthworms. Science. Earthworms, yep. yep. Yeah, absolutely. And you did possibly a chapter in religion or not yet? Yes. You did do your chapter in religion. And then math. Math. Did you correct it or did you just? Yeah, I got one wrong, but I did do that extra problem that I got right. So, <laughs> so you think it's a wash? Is that good? Probably. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's what's happening here. Thank you, Joe. He loves to open up the microwave when it's done. This one is for Peter. These, you can have either one of those. Put that one down though, it's for Peter. Yeah, don't they look done? Yes, they look totally done. I'd like you to bring a plate over. We need a plate. Plate. This is your toast. Do you want to gel anything on it? I'm putting it on a okay. napkin so I can do it quick. Plate. There you go, you want a toast? Yeah. There you go. Thank ya. We just wrapped up lunch and now Warren is actually going to take Peter to um, what we call the carcass pile and because he got, where is he? He got the predator. I was telling you guys about that. He's looking for cardboard. Oh, and recycling just came today, so no cardboard. Um, but anyway, guess what it was? It was an opossum. That's what we thought. We're like, it's either going to be a barn rat, which we literally never see them around, um, or it's an opossum, and that's what it is. So there he goes. I'll spare you guys the, the rest of it, but he's going to go over there, get that opossum, and then he's going to, again tonight, he's going to set, uh, he, we're going to re, oh, where's my finger here? And then tonight he's going to reset traps and things like that and see if there's anything else getting around the chickens. It's an absolutely gorgeous day out here today for, for September. And I'm definitely not giving up on flowers for a long, long time yet. So it's time to fill up the water jugs. Joe's going to come over and help me carry these water jugs in just a minute because something happened to the wagon that we were using and all four tires are flat and two of the tires actually are like slashed. So we're a little unsure what happened there. Nobody seems to know either. Now we're back to carrying them by hand. I see a lizard. The lizard is cute, happy, mm. and happy. I see a butterfly. 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 The butterfly is cute and happy. I see a crow. The crow is cute and happy. Happy. We in there by Mrs. Brown. Mrs. Brown is cute and happy. Awesome. Okay, we're going to look at our calendar here today. We are in the month of September. Today... <laughs> Tomorrow is Uncle Adam's birthday. Would you write Adam on here? Adam? B? A D A M. Adam? D? No, A. A. Yep, Adam. It was Adam's birthday. Yep. Okay. September. Yeah, September. All right, we're going to do um, some spelling words now. So I'm going to find. Where did it go? Here it is. There you go. Where's my guy? And here you go. I'm not going to use a pencil. Everybody was looking after lunch for some kind of, uh, just a little something sweet. <laughs> and so I thought, let's bake some grandma's peanut butter cookies this afternoon. This is in cookbook number two on page 65, if you want to follow along. And I'm going to start by creaming together a cup of shortening, a cup of peanut butter, one cup of white granulated sugar and one cup of packed brown sugar. I happen to have an open bag of dark brown sugar, which I don't use that often, and I thought, let's just use that. Um, so this, it, I'm using dark brown sugar this time. Three eggs, three cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking soda, and one fourth teaspoon of salt. So such easy, easy ingredients. Here I'm rolling them into about one and a half inch balls, something like that. And I am putting 15 to a pan. This is like my large Nordic Ware baking sheet. I'm gonna, I rolled them in sugar first before putting them on the pan. I'm gonna 
press a fork in a crisscross pattern on the top and put these in a 375 degree oven. It does say 10 to 12 minutes. I usually go less just because I would like the cookies to be much softer. Uh, so if you like them to have a little bit of a brownish to them, you know, where they've gotten a little golden, by all means, keep them in for 10 to 12. But if you want a, a really soft cookie, uh, I would go nine at the most, at least for my oven with my pans. I'm going to put these on a wire rack to cool, and I will tell you by noon tomorrow, they will probably all be gone. After doing YouTube for as long as I've been doing this, uh, since July of 2017, if I'm not mistaken, uh, sometimes I kind of get in this rut of the types of videos that I do, and often as I am filming, I'm thinking, is this really uh, helpful? Is this what it is that they're hoping to see? Um, are they learning something from this? Are they being encouraged by this? Are you, uh, whatever. I know I've brought this up with you, uh, to you guys before. And so coming up here, I am kind of making, I am formulating a plan as to how I'm going to be able to hang out with you all a little bit more personally, uh, and not just through videos where we're doing comments or even, um, uh, premiere videos where we're talking live in the chat, but a little bit more where it's more face-to-face -face type of thing. So I've kind of been thinking through this a little bit, how I'm going to work all of this, but if that is something that you're interested in, uh, definitely head down to the description box and wherever I have the little sign up for my e for my email newsletter that comes out about once a week, uh, if you could um, just go there and make sure that you get your email entered there because as things kind of start to progress in that and if what I have in my mind actually happens and comes to fruition, <laughs> It would be nice if I would be able to get in touch with you via email uh, just to kind of let you know like how how I'm going to go about doing that. OK, so just wanted to kind of get that out there. I have sort of mentioned this a little bit in some of the videos. I, I feel like I mentioned this in one of the other videos, um, but I just wanted something a little bit more concrete uh, in this video. We've got was that a goose call? Was that a duck call? I'm not sure. But anyway, we've got things going on. We have family faith formation tonight and I'm gonna be making a couple of frozen pizzas here for supper. It's only 4.15, we don't have to eat until five, um, but you know, by 4.30 I should be getting the oven preheated and everything, so uh, I've got just a few minutes, and I think I'm gonna actually go and work on editing a video. Well, good morning, it's already getting close to nine o'clock. We are getting started here with schoolwork. Um, the kids are feeding their worms that they collected. So for Maria's science, she had to collect worms yesterday. She had like a, do they call it an activity or an investigation? Oh, she doesn't know what which one they call it. But anyway, she was collecting worms and they were measuring and, oh, she's going to be making graphs and things like that. So anyway, Peter decided to get in on that too. And I've just been um, on what the, do? yeah, is keep it open. So they start to rot outside. They okay. just open outside so they start to rot and then they eat them. Okay. So Maria decided to feed her worm leaves and Peter's feeding his worm um, some carrot peels. So anyway, Joe was really on the ball this morning. Can I do this one-handed? <laughs> Joe was really on the ball this morning and he collected all the laundry really early, which is really nice because now even before we start up with school here, I can get a load of laundry going, which is going to be towels. So just every day we just collect. So just every day collect, sort, and start a load. That is the best way to keep up on the laundry. I'm going to turn this to hot with an extra rinse. I've already mentioned to you guys, um, in another video, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we are doing a study of the Red Badge of Courage, which has, this is the unabridged um, uh, edition, and uh, we have study guides, study guides to go with it, it that are from Progeny Press, and I'm just using the Dover Thrift uh, version. These Dover Thrift versions, at least when I got this, which was probably 10 years ago, <laughs> um, I was going to use it with one of the other kids and we just, it was one of the things that I had ordered that we just never got to through the school year. And, um, so now we're using it now, but anyways, these 
These are like two bucks. I don't know if that's how much they still are, but anyway, at that point, they were just two bucks for these Dover Thrift Editions. Uh, okay, so I'm pulling them over. Maria, you have to come over here now. Peter, you're going to have to put away your reading book, and we are going to work on this. So we just read a chapter a day, and then they work through the study guide questions, which I've kind of mentioned to you before. The study guide questions are a lot of how and why and what do you think and how do they describe things and just things like that, getting them really, really thinking about the writing material. While the kids were working on some of their just like individual work that I don't sort of manage, I guess I would say, uh, I was getting some more cookbooks shipped out, so or packaged up anyway. So Carol and Kimberly and Stephanie, your orders will be shipped out later today. Um, so now what I'm going to do is all the clothes that I had to um, that I hung yesterday. I'm going to get those ready to go back to everybody's room because the kids now are working on a math facts test. So I have five minutes to go and get this done. One thing I do is collect all the hangers. So as I'm putting people's laundry away, then any empty hangers I collect, so I can put them up here and then I have enough hangers for all the things that I like to hang to dry. I sent Peter and Maria outside to play. They were doing that like chase in the house. I am not for that at all. Like it drives me absolutely up the wall when they start that in the house chase. Anyway, I sent them outside. I was like, you guys get out there. I got Joe started on his schoolwork. He read to me his book and now he is doing some spelling. He's answering questions. They're like, yes and no. He has to read the question and then write yes or no, depending on his answer. And I also went outside and I got, let's step back. Ah, there's my island. <laughs> A little prettiness in the midst of all of that um, clutter. Just went out and cut some more zinnias. Look at some of these zinnias. They are so incredibly pretty. And I found that cutting them actually is good because they start to get so incredibly tall out there that if we kind of keep cutting them down, they seem to be blooming and blooming. Uh, and I just want them to bloom as long as possible. And we still have such nice weather that they should continue to bloom for quite a while here. Uh, Maria lit a candle, a candle in here. What is that? Peach mango popsicle. It smells so good. That was something that uh, that she had gotten for her birthday. And now it's 11.30, and so I need to think about some lunch. We do have some leftover pizza from last night. So I'm gonna pull that out. We have a little bit of lunch meat. We have some salad leftover from yesterday, which is gonna be eh. But um, a little tiny bit of that soup, a little bit of rice. What else do we have in here? Oh, I said we have a little lunch meat that we can have. And we'll just kind of make a lunch out of all of that. Really just kind of, I've got a little bit of homemade bread here. I know Joe and Warren, they really like that toasted a lot. So I could make them some toast, that kind of thing. Just gonna be a real simple lunch. So Warren decided that today is the day for the, the hearth, I guess. Is that what this is called, the hearth for building or designing and figuring out what we're gonna do for the hearth for the wood burner that we are going to be putting inside. You guys know that like back in January or something like that, maybe you remember that video, we actually had a Warren exposed the chimney that was here from like 1947 or something. He exposed that chimney and then we actually had a, a mason come and drill the hole and all that kind of thing. So we are, going to be putting in a wood burning stove. So he has all of this in here going on and we are just trying to figure out originally I had in in our mind we always thought it was going to be at an at an angle right here but now as we're starting to look at it we're kind of thinking maybe we want it like this because Warren pointed out that I'm in the kitchen a lot and I would be able to see the fire from the kitchen if it is this angle, if we have it angled like this, like which we were kind of originally thinking, then it's gonna be more this direction and more just available to those in the living room. So I'm just, I'm just torn because I really, in my mind, it was on an angle, 
and now we're talking about squaring it up. So anyway, this is what's happening. So we'll just kind of, I'll keep filming a little bit throughout the process and one day it'll be done. But anyway, Warren went to get the mail and he's like, okay, you need to figure it out while I go get the mail. And he's back from getting the mail and I still haven't figured out what I want to do. So what did we get? The mail. Oh, we got yeah, a little, have it. yeah, a little wrist. Maybe like not a, a wrist, pocket a pocket rosary. rosary. Yes, sorry, like a, a pocket packet. rosary. Oh, that's pretty. Mm -hmm. With the blue? Mm -hmm. That's so pretty. Should I start mixing the mortar? And... <laughs> oh. I mean, we can't stand around and look at it forever. we got to make a move. Ooh, listen to him. <laughs> um, I I don't know. All right, I'm gonna I just mixing you start mixing mortar. I really do. Once what I if start what mortar, if you I'm put that? Back. Wait, put it rocking. put it back right where you had it, and then just angle it a tiny bit. What if we just angled it a little bit? Is that going to look dorky? Maybe a little more. I I, I just don't know. I just so Tell had what, it in my if head. We're happy with the position of this and the amount of hearth that's exposed for fire protection. Let's at least get the rock mortared in place. Yes. it's going to have to dry a while. Yes. Not, and I'm not ready to move the stove in yet. Right, 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 right. So. Yes. Yes. Let's. How about if you do that part? Okay. What? I said, what am I, the entertainment? No, Peter's just, just sitting there. I'm reading. I was reading. So I think it is looking really, really cool. Yeah, I think it looks really cool. Yeah. At first, I wasn't sure if I wanted just the regular color, like concrete in between. But then when I was realizing that the concrete that is between, or whatever, the mortar between the bricks was the gray, I thought that would kind of tie it all together in a nice way. You our property. That's like our property, you think? That is our pond of Camp Island. Oh, okay. Right there. I think <laughs> that the rock is water and the concrete is a road and it's like the fork. Ah, there you go. You know, Could be that water too. On all sides. Right? And then it's just like the road. Yeah. So we're not sure if we're going to keep it in this exact uh, position. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That there. Um, or no. Oh, I don't know. Or no. Could it get stuff the other direction? So it had. <laughs> <coughs> the same. Like this? Yeah, like that. Because oh, that's going to look goofy as heck. Oh. What if I, oh, I break think... this and we jam that in there? On the edge. Okay. Mm -hmm. No? Not really. Hmm. That's too bad. Because <laughs> I did. Alright, I'll go cut this rock. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. These kinds of projects mm -hmm. that don't really have... You know, there's no directions for this kind of project. It's just sort of like, I have an idea, he has an idea, we're both trying to figure, I show him a picture. We took the picture to a, a number of different, uh, like, stone places, and they all just looked at me like, like, I, they just looked at me like there's no way we can accomplish that. And it was just a raw edge. If I can find that picture, which I just found on Pinterest, um, if I could find that picture, I will try to insert that in here so that you guys could kind of like see this sort of visual that I was kind of going for as far as the piece of rock that the hearth was going to be. Um, but anyway, they all looked at me like, no, you can't do that. There's, there's no way we can do it. Well, then Warren found all these rocks or all these stones and figured... He's like, we can make this work. So we're trying to get my vision and his vision and everything to kind of somehow mesh. Hmm. How's that? Yay or not or nay? Mm. I guess it's okay. I don't know. Just like maybe finish it up. Oh, no. Go back with that first one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we probably can work with that, huh? Work with that? I told you this is the first time I've ever done this, so I'm just I think winging it. <laughs> by guess and by gosh. I mean, yep. I've done some concrete over the years, but this is my first. Uh, like, first like artistic concrete. Yeah. 
I think it looks great. Because, I mean, that's what this is. It's kind of like, like part art, I don't know, concrete skill, like mixed together. Careful what you call skill. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'd just be wild as <laughs> luck. Maybe. <laughs> I think it looks cool. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think I it's, like it. Yeah, I think it's going to be neat when it's all, we have it all finished, right? And maybe whatever we decide dries, to do. it's going to be like that color at the bottom. It's going to be lighter. Yeah. It's for sure going to be a be lighter like color. color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yesterday Sam asked if I would uh, make some sourdough bread again. And so I brought out my starter. It had been in the fridge and I've been feeding it and discarding here, trying to get it to get be really active again. So I actually just pulled some of the discard out over here. I'm gonna make some blueberry muffins uh, using that. I just hate throwing it away. And what I have left in my jar here, I'm going to add, uh, I'm gonna feed it uh, 50, 50 grams of flour and 50 grams of water. 50 grams of flour and 50 grams of water. Then I like to put a rubber band around it wherever the level is so I can keep track of just how bubbly it is getting. Rather than just putting my lid on, um, like just, just gently laying the lid over, I'm actually using cheesecloth because I noticed immediately that the fruit flies wanted to start attacking it and so it needs, uh, what is that, it needs cheesecloth. Just added one more dribble of water to that. The blueberry muffin recipe that I'm going to make is in cookbook number two, and I have used this muffin recipe here to make all kinds of other muffins. I mean, you could throw in cranberries or bananas or raspberries or real apples, a little bit of cinnamon, really anything. It's just a really good base, uh, but blueberry muffins, so... Since I have a little bit of starter, I'm going to add just a smidge less of milk and a smidge less of flour. If I don't want to take time to sift my flour, I just give it a really good stir right here in the container. And that really fluffs up the flour. And then I will scoop it lightly into the cup. And measure, oh, I'm not sure if you saw that, and measure it that way. One. Hmm. I'm going to get my oven preheated to 375 pans. Mine are very, very dark, my muffin pans, so I'm going to keep it heated to, I'm only going to preheat to 350. And I'm just kind of folding this over. You don't want to mix muffin batter too hard. You can end up with little peaks rather than a nice rounded top. I have some very icy blueberries here. We're going to get those in there. I need to get these used up. They've been in the freezer. And I'm just going to lightly stir those in as well. Just kind of turn them over a couple times. It's probably out on the desk. Out on the I, I love using this. This is from Pampered Chef, but you can buy them all over the place. Just a nice level scoop makes the perfect size muffin. I don't know why I haven't done this before today, but I'm going to mark down that this makes 18 muffins. So 18 blueberry muffins going into the oven. I'm going to bake mine about 15 to 17 minutes probably because I put it at 350 since I have such dark pans. If you have newer light colored pans, I would definitely go the 375 um, and then just watch them carefully so that you don't end up over baking them. All right, you know, I put these in for th at 350 degrees. They ended up being in for uh, 18 minutes rather than the 15, but I definitely, you know, I didn't want the bottoms to get too dark. 
and look at those round little tops. Aren't they just so cute? Look yep. at those. Yes, Joe thinks they're cute too. Here's just a giant one. This one I must have had quite a bit That's of so quite a bit of batter That's in. So, so anyway, I'm going to get those out cooling on a wire rack and someone is going to come put some butter on one of these and have one of these shortly, I'm pretty sure. Are these Since uh, yesterday we did not get to Red Badge of Courage. Was that just yesterday we didn't? Correct. So we did it this morning and that would have been kind of like for yesterday. And since today we actually are at home all day long, uh, we're going to do we're going to do it again. We have time right now. We've oh, gotten a lot nicely. Yeah, we've got a lot of things done here today. So there I'm not going to Excuse me. Um, so anyway, that's what we're going to do. We're going to just sit down and I'm going to read one chapter. They're nice short chapters, only like four pages. It's only going to take us about 15, maybe 15 more minutes. I just brushed so the we're, So we're going to be taking uh, Warren's brother out. It's his birthday. We're taking him to the park tonight. We're going to pick up some chicken at... We're, first we were thinking KFC, but now we're thinking Quick Trip. And then I just cut up a bunch of vegetables. I've got carrots, celery, and cucumbers. And I bought some dip. Peter is making some Kool-Aid over there. They're putting some ice in it. We're just gonna take, you know, picnic stuff and then there's a really nice park uh, nearby um, nearby him. And so we're gonna take him to a park and we're just gonna kind of hang out. It's such a beautiful day. I mean, well, beautiful to me. It is, it's like 86 in the shade. So, perfect day. Well, good morning. I am following along, I just YouTubed easy, quick sourdough, and I'm going to be using this guy's method here, how I make sourdough bread every day in less than 30 minutes. And so I'm just following along because I was able to get my sourdough starter revived. It took about three days, no, maybe only two days. Anyway, took a couple of days here, two to three days to get it um, going. And this morning when I came out here, it was all the way up to the top. So here was my rubber band from yesterday. It was all the way up here and it was really bubbly, so I thought it's time to go. So the, I'm just, he does everything in grams, so I have my scale set to grams, and so far I have in the water and the sourdough starter. The sourdough starter left in my jar, so I'm just gonna pop the lid on it. Eight grams of sea salt. Do I have sea salt? Mediterranean sea salt. Look at that, I have it. 388. There's 288. I mix everything together with a spoon. Now the secret to creating a really manageable dough. How do I know what my protein content is? It just says it contains a higher percentage of protein than regular all-purpose. All right, he does give a suggestion of wetting your hand before mixing. All right, I just threw a hat on. I still need to get myself completely completely ready for the day here. Oh my goodness, I wanted to get up and shower and all of that. Well, then it was workout and then it was talk time and coffee with Warren and then I was like, oh, I need to do the sourdough thing because I noticed. Anyway, here we are. So Warren is actually shutting down sprinklers right now and, and then he has to take a fruit sample. So. Wednesday, and the sprinklers are going not for frost right now, they're going uh, for irrigation. He's only had two potential frost nights this year so far, and that was last week, Friday and Saturday, and he did have to run Friday night, but he did not end up having to run on Saturday night. It didn't get quite as cold as they were predicting. And he's trying to frost the berries a, just a tiny bit, because that brings on the red, and that's what we're going for right now is red berries. We really don't want green and we don't want white. He took a fruit sample on, this is Friday, right? This is Friday. Yeah, so he yes. took a fruit sample on Wednesday of, this would be the fruit that, on the beds that we want to harvest next week. Yes. Um, well, actually, if we get the go ahead today, we'll actually start flooding tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, so uh, the go-ahead means that the color is a little bit more than what it was Wednesday. So Wednesday it was... It was 20. 20. We 
you and have you're... to hit a minimum of 22. 22. And <clears throat> they really, I think there's a good chance. I think I would actually be surprised if we're not given the go ahead. Right. But it's possible. If we're not given the go ahead, it's just going to set everything back about a week, which is hard when you yeah uh, have people lined up have people lined up to help harvest and mm -hmm. then you know they have their own schedules they have to worry about right and if i don't know we'll just yeah. take it as it comes second engine is that what we're, what we're doing right now going yep. to shut down this engine yep okay and then idling it down yeah and then we'll uh at some point here be taking a fruit sample and i'll mm -hmm. bring you guys along for that just we'll that see. we have to idle the engines down and let them idle for five minutes before we shut them off because you have to cool down the turbos and everything and and uh, you can't just idle it down and turn it off. And turn it's, it off. It just can't. Just can't Not do that. if you want it to last. Okay. Okay, I'll just follow your your path down. Oh, I hate stepping on the fruit though. I know, me too. All right. I'll try to take your super long footsteps. <laughs> The vines are so long. Well, they haven't uh, had a lot of time to uh, be trained. This is the right. young bed. So, this is the youngest of all this of them. This is the youngest of all. Mm hmm. Of all the high reds. Of all the high reds, right. All right, let's take this back. Okay. Uh, I got I hate try stepping to on fruit. Turn back, get my feet into the same spots. Battery's gonna die. <laughs> nope. All right, when we were out in the field, my battery died, so we're back, and he's just uh, putting them out on a towel, not picking anything out other than just like maybe little, just the vines or whatever. You want every single berry in there because you want a, a really good count, and but he likes to dry them off just a little bit. So he's going in to get some bags. Those have to be labeled with what bed number it is. This is a younger bed, so it means the vines are thinner and um, you don't have quite the canopy that you do on an older bed. And so the fruit definitely colors a lot faster. If we look over at this one, I don't know if you guys can see it or tell through the camera, but I can definitely tell like with the naked eye. And here there's only one green berry just one. This one's got a little bit of green. Let's look over here, because they go from green to white to red. Mm, that would be a green. Yeah, we definitely have some greens in here, don't we? It has been some time later. I need to get back to this. We're going to... Um, he didn't put anything on the counter. But he said he just spent about a minute bringing this into <laughs> a dough, into a ball. But... When he did it, it wasn't sticking and doing this. When he brought it around, it stayed in this nice, smooth... Maybe I need to back up a little bit. Maybe I'm missing a step here. Then they're well worth the investment. As good After as it's going to be. Dough out, I gently, now from here, I fold one side of right. the dough over onto the center third and repeat. So now what he does is he starts spreading it out, going around the edge 
until he gets a really nice big circle. And he says it gives that bread some time. By the time you get back around the circle, it gives it a little time to relax. Mine is tearing just a little bit. He also said if you have a very high protein, his bread flour was a 13% protein. I looked on the bag of the Pillsbury bread flour and it just says higher protein than all purpose. Um, but he does say that it won't, it's not supposed to tear. Get to this. So now he brings, folds this in a third and then folds this one in a third. Oh yeah, the water is actually helping quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And then he folds this in a third and folds this in a third and he ends up with like a rectangle. And now he folds in the corners to form a dough ball. And I need to hit play, but my hands are so dirty. How am I gonna do this? Just go for it, huh? That's what I'm gonna do. Just go for it and wash the screen later. I fold each corner in, shape the dough into a ball. All right, I put that back into the bowl and now it's going to bulk ferment. Oh gosh. <laughs> this is just real right now. Uh, it is going to bulk ferment for six hours at room temperature. And I'm still dealing with fruit flies. It's like, it just doesn't want to quit. It's either the black flies or it's the fruit flies. The mosquitoes are starting to come back again. We had like a beautiful month of no mosquitoes and now the mosquitoes are back. This morning there were two of them out there, just, I know two, only two. At one point this summer, there was like a hundred every single time you went outside. There were just like a hundred of them on you at one time. There were two of them humming around me um, when I was doing my workout this morning because I'm still doing those outside on the patio. Uh, and then, yeah, anyway, the mosquitoes, they're back too. So, although I absolutely, although I absolutely love the heat, I am ready for a couple of frost nights here in a row. Like two, three, four good frost nights. I know that would be horrible for Warren, but we are, I think he's actually ready for it too, just because we love to get rid of some of these bugs. Okay, I have to cover the bowl and my little bowl cover came from Anna at Stay the Course Homestead. So I can link her channel. She has a really active Instagram. I think she's actually a little bit more active on Instagram, but she's from Wisconsin. Uh, she actually does, um, she does a couple of different farmer's markets where she has her sourdough bread, sourdough, she might do sourdough cinnamon rolls, or maybe those are yeast cinnamon rolls, and then she d might do sourdough brownies. I can't remember exactly, but I can link her stuff in the description box for you guys. Um, but she also has, uh, um, dehydrated sourdough starter that you can purchase and she has these little uh, bowl covers that you can purchase and they are just so cute so so cute I mean they're easy to make but if you don't sew and you want to do a sourdough bread you can buy one and she'll make it for you that's so much better I feel refreshed and actually ready to start the whole day all right I just sorted out the laundry I don't know I didn't need to go in there though because I just brought the laundry out here. I'm going to do a, a quick load. I'm going to do a load of darks here. I've been really working at doing a load every single day. Um, well, because we've been making sure that we are home during the day this week, which has been just a nice treat. Uh, Warren is back from dropping off the sample. It'll be it'll be a little bit before he gets the the reading back, but just the the lady who is going to be running the samples right away she looked at the one you know the like the second bed that we did come on focus focus maybe it's let's see here. you know the second bed that we did and she was like i don't even need to test that because that one definitely looks ready to go um which i mean we were pretty much thinking that too but it it's it's deceiving sometimes you look at the fruit and you're like oh that looks great and then you take in a sample and they're like, oh no, that's only reading like 19 or something. Anyway, the other one for sure, uh, they need to test because she's like, I don't even know, 
I, she, when she looked at that one, she was like, boy, the other day it tested 20. She's like, that doesn't even quite seem like it would have uh, done that. So anyway, let's, um, we'll wait. We'll wait until this afternoon. We'll get a call. I'll share that with you. And that's probably about the time when I will be ending this video. I don't want to leave you guys hanging <laughs> on that information because I'm sure you're all sitting on the edge of your seat to know that. You guys know the other day he caught that one opossum, uh, but then he didn't reset that particular trap. So he was working. He's actually out there. There. Oh, there he is. He was just actually out there working on uh, setting that trap so it's ready for tonight. Hopefully, we'll see if we're catching an, another opossum. We did get four eggs yesterday during the day, which was kind of nice, but we're still unsure why we were getting like 10 a day before I went to Florida, and then I come back and we're hardly getting anything or like zero for a number of days and then we were getting two, now we're getting four. That's kind of just a never ending thing when you have chickens and you have woods around you. Before I call the boys in to start on schoolwork, uh, yeah, they've been just playing and having so much fun. It's such a beautiful day out there right now, at least this morning. Cool, it's warm but yet cool, low humidity, just a lovely day. So they've been outside all morning. Maria is off. Um, babysitting and so I just thought well just give them some time and there's just we've been doing a lot of things anyway so I'm going to put together this mushroom beef spaghetti sauce sans mushrooms <laughs> if I had a can of mushrooms or something I would put them in oh would I would I I probably would put them in at the end and then I would just pick them out. I really don't mind picking mushrooms out, but I don't have any right now, so I'm not going to. You could also use fresh mushrooms and saute them up like I'm going to do with the onion. So this is just, I'm using one and a half pounds of hamburger, and this is ground beef, because I am completely out of venison right now, at least ground venison. This recipe is in cook book number two on page 20 if you want to follow along you probably can hear that sizzle that is my ground beef starting to brown I'm going to add in this onion and like I said if you are really into mushrooms go ahead and add those in as well fresh or canned or whatever whatever it is you mushroom people like <laughs> and this is going to be a crock pot recipe but I do get it started in on the stove top first. At this point I need to run down to the basement. I need to get a quart of diced tomatoes and some tomato sauce. And then I bought tomato paste the other day. Four quart, I think this is crock pot. Uh, you can you use all the way down to a three quart. That would be fine as well. So I have some diced tomatoes. Oh, you guys can't can use the whole jar if you don't have home canned just two cans of diced tomatoes from the store tomato sauce in a pint so I'm gonna use half of this and then the other half I'm gonna save for making pizza burgers Woo! two little cans of tomato paste if you can find a 12 ounce then that's you just need one can but we couldn't find a 12 ounce can there's my little baby spatula my little baby spatula here I hope you guys are enjoying the September collaboration. There's been so many great soup recipes, and I love how everybody does it a little different. Some are some people are canning their soup, which I really have been loving. Um, you know, some people I just I just love all the different variations. So I hope that you guys are checking out all those other channels and commenting. Remember, you have a chance to win. Was it a $100? Yeah, I think it's a $100 gift certificate, either Amazon or Visa gift card. All right, let's get in a cup. I'm going to use one cup of water and then some beef bouillon here. I have the better than bouillon today. I'm going to use, actually, I'm going to use all of what's in here. Should I? Yeah, I'm going to use all of what's in here. There's not that much. Get this used up. If you had your own, like, home canned beef stock that would be delicious in here as well all right I'm low on parsley flakes um, 
I have a half a teaspoon and I need two tablespoons. A tablespoon of brown sugar. I have dark brown sugar open, so I'm just going to use that. I need a teaspoon of oregano. And a teaspoon of basil. I always try to keep my containers labeled, but lately I've been getting them from Walmart and they have a black lid, and I just don't have a silver Sharpie right now. I need to get that on my list. Basil, basil, basil. All right, you guys, we are in rough shape here today. Parsley and basil. I'm going to have to put those on my list, and maybe we can run to Dollar General today. Um, although I wanted to go to Dollar General tomorrow when the coupon was going to work. Mm -hmm -hmm. Well, we can put in a teaspoon of salt. I've got that. Actually, I'm going to go a little bit less on the salt just because I had quite a bit of that beef. Um, soup base and we need some a good amount of pepper a quarter teaspoon and then just a teaspoon of minced garlic let's get that stirred up I just have to remember about the basil and the parsley and this will simmer and once we put the meat in it's going to thicken up and it'll simmer in the crock pot all day on low six to eight hours really as long as you have until it's supper time what is that for for the spaghetti oh that's tonight yeah remember what's for tomorrow night tomorrow is pizza burgers yeah right all your favorites mm -hmm. <laughs> what is happening tomorrow uh depending on the fruit sample today which we should get back in just a couple of hours um we may be picking up pipe tomorrow and what if uh, and then we'll be going to church Saturday night and then we'll be picking up pipe on Sunday as well if the color sample does not come in good then there'll be a change of plans and I'm not 100% sure what those plans will be anything I can help with um not really we just gotta nope. get going on school work now what is that this is my sourdough bread. I just transferred all of the hamburger over, the hamburger and onion mixture, and I used this Rada Cutlery spoon. I really love my Rada Cutlery products, you guys. I really do. There was a little bit of grease there, you know, and I didn't want to put that into here. I didn't soak up with a paper towel or anything like that because I did want a little bit of that. It adds a lot of great flavor. Look at that. That is nice and thick. Now, if you were also doing the mushrooms, this would be even thicker. I feel sweaty, dirty, and tired. <laughs> All right, Warren got the call that he was waiting for. Yeah, color's good. We're ready to go. Starting the flood tomorrow morning at 2 a.m. Uh, hoping to pull pipe between 8 and 10 and then get in the bed with the rake and hoping to have it all raked off by 2 in the afternoon. Okay. And then uh, start bringing the water up. All right, well, that was good. Yeah, so the one bed that we were we were like, well, that one definitely is going to make color. Yeah, it made... I think it was a 42. A 42. And they have to be a 22. <laughs> they have to be 22. And then the other one had... Was that a 21? Um, was that a 21? It bumped up. It bumped up one... Um, point. One point. That mm -hmm. means everything's going to be a go for tomorrow. At the end of today, that's when I'm going to be ending this video. And then I will actually be starting in on the Cranberry Harvest videos tomorrow morning. So that's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it is quarter to four now. 3.30 was the time that I needed to take my little cap off here, my little cover, and I'm going to have to do, <clears throat> I guess what you kind of call a stretch and fold. I'm going to do the technique that this video is showing me. Now, when he dumped it out, it didn't stick. <laughs> and then he basically just folded it over. And I think mine's a bit on the wet side, and that's probably because my bread or my uh, flour is not quite. Ooh, ooh! This is actually working out the way the the way it looked. Okay, uh, maybe mine isn't too wet. All right, this is just going to set here now for ten minutes. I will come back and dust it with some flour, flip it over, and I'll do some shaping. Um, he suggests rice flour. I don't have that, and so I'm just going to be using wheat flour. The 
This has to sit out uncovered room temperature for one and a half hours at this point. I'm still working through the meal plan that uh, Peter and I put together. So tonight it is going to be spaghetti. You guys saw me making that this morning. I picked up some of this oh, flies, 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 flies. I picked up some of this Texas toast. Uh, this is in the bakery department at Walmart. And I have some water going over here for some spaghetti. I'm going to do green beans. And I'm also going to do cauliflower. So I'm going to cook most of this cauliflower. Some of it I'm going to keep for raw. Tomorrow we are doing another veggie and dip tray. And that went over so well. The veggies that I cut up yesterday between last night's supper, Sam taking some for lunch, and us having some, the rest of them for lunch today, they're gone. So that was really a winner. And that was what Peter wanted to do again for tomorrow, is just do raw veggies and dip. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to save some of this for that. Since I'm in the kitchen, I'm waiting for the water to boil. I'm going to cut up the vegetables for tomorrow. An hour and a half has passed. I'm going to put this into my garage fridge. And it's just going to stay out there uncovered. That's what his directions say, uncovered. And until tomorrow. And he says he put bakes it after he drops his daughter off at the bus. At the bus. So I guess I would say I'll probably look at it when I get up and then maybe it'll be ready by like eight o'clock in the morning or something to bake. You gonna take some green beans? Yeah. Okay. Looks good. That truck on that nice down. Looks good. Nah, 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 nah. All right, we've got his and hers tonight. I put mine over cauliflower. I just think that it tastes good and it keeps down the carbs. <laughs> Although that smells really good, that garlic bread smells so good.